What does PC even mean? PC stands for personal computer. A personal computer is basically a computer and it's just not a laptop. There are two main types of PCs. Pre-builts that are computers that you can buy fully assembled and fully put together. And they are often, often considered worse than a custom PC. Custom PCs, which you will need to buy all the parts for and put together, are considered better. This documentary will be mainly focused around building my PC. PCs were first made in 1975 with the MITS Alpair 88 and the IMSAI 88, both using the Intel 8080 processor. We will explain what a processor is later on in the documentary. The next part of the documentary is about the CPU, or the computer processing unit. It is also called the processor. The, the CPU that I chose is the Ryzen 5 3600. The Ryzen 5 3600 is a pretty good budget CPU. The way a CPU works is little tiny electronic particles go through prongs at the back of the CPU and send messages through it and run the computer. The more megahertz you have is the more electronic particles move through those in each second. Next up we're talking about the cooler. The cooler is a fan that screws in on top of the CPU and makes sure that the CPU is cooled down. If the CPU is not cooled down, it can run much slower or even be destroyed. If the CPU is destroyed, you will have to buy a new part and the computer will not work. The CPU cooler that I got came in the box with the CPU. I could alternatively get an, a better cooler for extra money, but in my case I'm building a budget PC, so I just went with the cooler that was in my box. Okay, so now let's backtrack a bit here. The first thing that you need to do is get out your motherboard. Your motherboard has all the components on it that you need to, to put on your computer. You put everything into your motherboard. The motherboard has a series of wires going, going through it that carry messages around. The part we're zooming into now is where, it goes, where the CPU goes. The part that we're zooming into now is where the RAM goes. RAM is memory, but we'll talk about that a bit later in the documentary. This part is where the GPU goes. We're going to talk about that as well later in the documentary. It's very important to not touch any of the parts in the motherboard when you're building the computer. Because if one of those little wires running through it breaks, then the whole motherboard will break. And you will have to buy a new part, and nothing will work. The motherboard is basically the heart of the computer. If you don't have a motherboard, you cannot have anything else on the computer. So the motherboard um, helps deliver power to all the different parts, but most importantly, it helps them communicate. Because if without the motherboard helping them communicate, they wouldn't be able to work together. Now we're on to storage for your computer. The image that I'm showing you now is of an HDD. An HDD has a downsides and upsides. The upside is that it has more storage usually, but runs less fast and boots games up less more slow. The option that I went with was an SSD. It normally has less storage, but it's much faster and it helps you run your computer faster. An SSD is a chip that goes into the motherboard as an HDD is a external part that you put below your in your case. So you may be wondering, how does all this get power? Well, I'll tell you. It comes from the power supply. The power supply that I chose was a 650 watt bronze power spec. Bronze is the rating of how good the power supply is. There's bronze, gold, and platinum. Bronze works just fine. Everything is plugged into the power supply. The power supply can either be turned on or off. If you turn off the power supply, there's less chance of a power surge hitting your PC and destroying some of the parts. Now we're going to talk about RAM. RAM is memory. It, it stores the things that are on your computer right now running and doesn't save them though, like a SSD or an HDD would. RAM comes in a couple different sizes. There's 4 gigs, 8 gigs, 16 gigs, 32 gigs, and it can even go up to 250 gigabytes on the very expensive side of computers. 
so everything was going great. I was getting all my parts in, everything was working out until something bad happened. Right now, GPUs are in really high supply or really high demand and they have a really low supply, so those are super difficult to get. But also depending on the time, it can be different parts that are hard to get. The first car that I was gonna buy, the RX 5600 XT, was now being discontinued. I had to find a new graphics card and fast. I was getting my, my PC soon and I had to find a graphics card that would work. So I got a replacement graphics card, which was $40. It, was, it is called the NVIDIA GeForce 710. This is just an in-between graphics card, so that way I can find have time to find a new one. Lucky for me, a new graphics card was coming out in just a couple of days. It was called the 3060. The only downside was I had to wait outside of Micro Center to get a voucher for it, and then come back later to pick it up. Okay, so this morning I picked up this voucher to go get a graphics card, and we're about to go into Micro Center and get the graphics card for real. After all that to get the graphics card, it was as easy as unplugging my old graphics card and plugging in my new one to have my PC up and running smoothly. talk about when building a computer is the case. That is the last step. Once you build your motherboard and everything that you need, you apply it into the case and then your computer will work. A case needs to have good airflow so that way the components stay cooled and do not break. Cases normally have a glass front and holes in the side and top so that way they can let air in. You can attach fans to the side of a case to let more air in so it gets more air circulation and makes the components cooler. Uh, my name is Carter Tolman. I'm 14. I go to the Monticello Trails Middle School. Um, building PCs can be a really rewarding thing and it allows you to build something that you can then use to do stuff that you want to do. Um, so you're going to need a CPU, a GPU, a motherboard, power supply, a case, um, RAM, storage, and I think that's everything. Um, and to get the parts, you can buy them from different online retailers, or you can buy them from local stores, like such as Best Buy or Micro Center. Um, a GPU, um, basically, it tells your screen what to display, and it decides, you know, how things should look. So overclocking, something, it might have a base speed of, for example, 3.6 megahertz, and so you could overclock it to, for example, 4.1 megahertz, and so then it's a lot faster, but it also uses quite a bit more energy and can output more heat. So you're gonna need a better cooling solution. Um, building a PC can really help you because you can get exactly what you want. Whereas if you're just buying, you know, a pre-built PC or just whatever, then it might not be exactly what you want. So if you need a really good graphics card or you need lots of storage, you can easily do that when you build your own. Okay, thank you.